In this lesson, we are looking at classifying using molecular sequences, and we're really only covering this particular dot point in this lesson, uh, but we are going to link them in with all of these dot points soon. Right, so, so far we've classified living things using physical features with the Linnaean classification system and via their reproductive methods considering, you know, the K and R selected species. Our final method by which we classify organisms is through molecular sequences. Now, initially we know that Linnaeus used physical features to group the organisms, which he assumed were closely related. But with more recent research and discoveries through many more avenues of science, we can get more information from an organism's molecules, right? Now, the main molecules we're talking about here are DNA, the proteins um, which they create and use, and the mitochondrial DNA, which is found within the mitochondria of eukaryotic cells. Now, we know that the DNA sequences within our cells are inherited from our immediate biological parents, right? And we can extend that idea and infer that if we've inherited the sequences from our ancestors from many thousands of years gone by, now, we use these sequences as clues to predict whether they are shared ancestors between organisms. And if we consider it in the context of the now widely accepted theory of evolution, you know, the larger the number of differences in the sequences, we assume the more time has passed since we've shared a common ancestor with that organism. Mutations actually occur in the DNA over time, so these changes will start to accumulate. So we can infer that the more shared molecules or the more shared molecular sequences there are, the more closely related organisms will be. We have to understand first what these sequences actually are. So it might, you know, you might need to do some revision back to year 10. If we're talking about DNA nucleotides or base pairs, the order of the ATGC sequence determines the physical and physiological features in an organism. So we can compare differences within the same gene, right, within the species or between different species. Now you've got to recall that proteins consist of a very long chain of amino acids. So when considering uh, the molecular sequence used to classify the organisms, we focus on the order of these amino acids, basically. Now, while this is still determined by our DNA base pair sequence, there's still subtle changes between species that can occur. If we compare one specific gene, this one's a cytochrome C gene. Um, as an example, the amino acid sequence in humans and say chimps is identical. Um, but this doesn't necessarily mean that the DNA sequence is identical. It does mean that we are from the same order, and we can see from this table here that there are more differences in the amino acid sequence in all these different uh, organisms. And more distantly, uh, we could be considered related to all these species. So if you have a look at, say, humans, rhesus monkeys really, really close. These ones, you know, 10 to 12, approximately with the horse, donkey, sheep, dog. But the yeast there, there's 50 differences in our amino acid sequence in that one gene. Now, mitochondrial DNA is a tiny circular chromosome found in mitochondria of eukaryote cells, and it provides the instructions uh, for a small number of proteins and some RNA strands. But interestingly, it is passed on only through the maternal line. So it accrues any changes at a regular rate, just like DNA but at a much faster rate because it doesn't have the ability to repair itself like our regular uh, nuclear DNA does. Now, all of these molecules, the DNA, the proteins, and the mitochondrial DNA can be used in comparative studies to determine the relatedness of organisms. If we come back to these ideas about relatedness and evolution, we have to remember that over generations, organisms will adapt to their environment, right? So the gene pool of a population will accumulate all these tiny little changes in an incremental way. So they may eventually get to the stage where they change so much that they become a new species. Now, the more recently two organisms have actually formed um, a new species, you know, that will have a shared common ancestor. So, for example, these ones are more closely related because they have a more close common ancestor in their history, as opposed to, say, the woolly mammoth and the African savannah ele elephant. Sorry. You can have a look at different, uh, you know, time graphs as well and genetic divergence to see certain genes and how they, um, how they actually change over time. So remember, this was our third remaining uh, information on how to describe classification systems, and this was about molecular sequences.